Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. Father, thank you for the word this morning. I thank you, Father, that as you allow me to share this word today, that it's going to really help people learn better how to be led by the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. What's a prompting? It's a gentle reminder. That's how you learn how to hear from God. You learn how to be sensitive enough to what's going on in your inner life that if you don't have peace about something, that's an immediate signal to you that you need to back off or you need to wait or you need to get more information from God. Or if something doesn't fit. How many of you have ever had on clothing that was way too tight? <laughs> okay, that's bad, but I'll tell you what I really hate is a pair of jeans with a crooked leg. Have you ever had on a pair of jeans that one seam was crooked? And I mean, all day, you're just like. It's like, I can't wait to get somewhere and get those things off. And I tell you, it's interesting to me because the older I've gotten, the less willing I am to wear anything that's uncomfortable. Now, I think there's a correlation. The older, the more you mature in God, the less willing you are to keep doing things that make you uncomfortable in the spirit because you know it's just not worth it. Come on, give God praise. I would rather have a whole group of people get mad at me because I say no to them if that means I get to say yes to God and I get to have peace and be comfortable. Because you know, like it or not, and I don't mean to be mean about this or rude about it, but most, most of the time when people want us to do something, it's for their benefit. And they're really not all that concerned about. <laughs> but God is concerned about you. I mean, I have so many people that hear from God about what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> oh, sister, God told us you're supposed to come do our conference. I said, well, he, he, he. He need to told me because I didn't hear it. <laughs> I heard I'm supposed to tend to my business, <laughs> do what he's called me to do and what I'm responsible for, and then have a sane life so I can get some rest and live a long time. That's what he's told me. Well, we know we heard from God, but see, you, and that used to pressure me because I used to think, well, my goodness, I mean, what if they heard from God? I mean, what if they heard from God? I don't want to be missing God. You know what? God rarely tells somebody else what you ought to be doing. Can you tell me what to do? No, please don't ask me what you should do. I'm trying to figure out what I'm doing still. Now, that's in balance, of course. I mean, we do counsel people, and we do give people a word of wisdom or a word of advice. But when it gets down to personal things in your life, like somebody asked me something the other day about some call in their life and some different things that were happening to them and things they thought they were hearing. And I mean, I'd known the person five minutes. And I said, I, I would be doing you an injustice trying to answer that because I don't even really know enough about you to even try to get into that. You know, these are the times when we have to learn how to be led by the Holy Spirit for ourselves. And you know what? Most of the time, the only way that you learn how to do what's right is by making a few mistakes. Amen? All right, now, fat heads and lean souls. A professor at one of the largest colleges in America asked why students would jam into a room to hear a wonderful man of God named Rabbi Zacharias. I know this story because he was just recently on my TV program. And he said he went to this college, one of the big Ivy League colleges, and he does these nights teaching why Jesus. Why do we need Jesus? And the room was jam-packed full of young people from the college. They couldn't even all get in the room. They were out in the halls. They were trying to just get close enough to listen. And one of the professors was there, and he said to Dr. Zacharias, why in the world? We, we have a hard time getting these kids to get interested in much of anything. Why would they cram in here to hear you talk about 
why Jesus? And this was what he said, and I thought it was phenomenal. Well, perhaps you filled their minds but left their souls empty. A fathead is considered to be someone who either has or thinks they have a lot of knowledge, and then it becomes a point of pride for them, and often makes them think that they are superior to other people. And spiritual pride is the worst kind of pride that we can possibly have. Well, I know and understand this book, and don't you try to tell me anything. That's a bad attitude. Anytime that we think there's nothing else for us to learn and we don't need to ever pay attention to what anybody has to say, that we know it all, there's no more dangerous person than a know-it-all. Somebody who thinks they know everything, they're never wrong, they can't say I was wrong, they can't listen, they can't humble themselves. It's not only a problem, it is a dangerous problem. You're placing yourself in a position of being unteachable if you do that, and that's a very dangerous place to be. Amen. Knowledge should be sought after, but what kind of knowledge should we seek after? Well, in Ephesians 1, verses 17 through 19, I'm just going to quote them for you instead of us going through them all. Paul prayed for the church, and I love this. I've done a whole series of teachings on this, and he said, he prayed three specific things. He said, I pray that you would have wisdom and insight, revelation, knowledge, that you might know God. So if you want to know something, get to know God. Know God. Not just about God. Know God. Know Him personally. Then he said, and I pray that you would know your calling and the inheritance that you have in Jesus Christ. I was thinking about that this morning. Inheritance means that something is just given to you, it's willed to you. Do we have any idea what we have by the undeserved grace and favor of God? Our sins are forgiven, we're gonna live eternally, we have right standing with God, we have peace, we have joy, we have the Holy Spirit living on the inside of us, directing us and guiding us. I mean, I could go on and on and on and on and on and on. And Paul said, you need to know your inheritance. You see, you can have all kinds of head knowledge, but if you don't know God and you don't know who you are in Christ, then you can still be a brilliant, miserable person. Amen? And you know, everybody's big on education, and I think education's great. You can get all of it that you want, but don't ever let it be a point of pride in your life where you begin to think that because you know this and you know that and you've got two or three degrees and, you know, blah, 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 that now you know more than everybody else, and so that puts you in a position where you don't have to listen to anybody else. Actually, the more you know up here, if it's real true knowledge, the, the more humble it's going to make you. And then the third thing that he said we should know is that we would know the power that's available to us as believers in Jesus Christ. So there are things that we want to know. There's lots of things we want to know. I like to learn new things. I like to watch documentaries and things like that that teach me something. I, li I like to watch documentaries about the animal kingdom because it just, I'm so amazed at how God has put everything together and all the different things that he's done. There's something in us that wants to grow and wants to learn. But we need to make sure that we're learning something that's really going to help us in the long run and do us some good. 1 Corinthians 8, 1 and 2. We have to always depend on God's anointing rather than, than depending on what we know. You know, I know how to preach by now. I've been doing it for 36 years. But I depend on God's anointing. Because no matter what I know, if he's not with me, what I know is not going to make any sense. 1 Corinthians 8, 1 and 2. Now, they were talking about a specific subject that they argued a lot about in Paul's day, which was, could they eat meat that was offered to idols, or should they not eat meat that was offered to idols? And Paul was saying, well, if you have enough faith, then you know the idol's nothing but a dumb hunk of wood. So therefore, any food offered to that idol couldn't possibly be tainted. Nonetheless, he said, 
If you don't have the faith for that, then just don't eat it because it's better that you keep a clear conscience than that you do something that's going to make you feel guilty. So they're arguing and having all their conversations about this. So here's what Paul says. Now about food offered to idols, of course we know that all of us possess knowledge concerning these matters. Yet mere knowledge causes people to be puffed up. How many of you know what puffed up is? I'm better than you. I know more than you. Don't try to tell me anything. If you're not doing it my way, then you're doing it wrong. Bear that they, it, it, it leads them to bear themselves loftily and be proud. But love, affection, and goodwill, and benevolence edifies and builds up and encourages one to grow to his full stature. Now let's look at verse 2. If anyone imagines that he's come to know and understand much of divine things without love, he does not yet perceive and recognize and understand as strongly and clearly as he ought to. So you know what Paul's saying? No matter how much you think you know, now this is good, so you don't want to miss it. No matter how much we think we know, and yes, I'm talking to all the people watching by TV. I'm not just talking to all the people in here. No matter how much you think you know. <laughs> yes, I'm talking to you. No matter how much you think you know. Do you know how we love to tell people what we know? Well, I think, I think, well, uh, uh, I think. Half the time when people are talking, we're wanting them to shut up so we can tell them what we think. <laughs> Let me tell you what I know. I know, I know, I think, I think, I think. So no matter what you think you know, are you ready? If you're not walking in love, then the Bible says you don't know anything. <laughs> I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. So get all the knowledge that you want to, but make sure that you always depend on God. You know, we've got lots of employees at Joyce Meyer Ministry, and they're educated, they're smart. All this computer stuff today and the technology, it just absolutely amazes me. I don't know what we'd do if we didn't have an IT department to call when everything crashes and goes down. And we need people like that. We need professional people. But you know what? And I've talked to our whole staff about this. I don't want them depending on the technology. I want them depending on the anointing of the Holy Spirit to help them know how to work the technology. You know what? We have a, we have a beautiful place now. And of course, you know, this is Lakewood Church, and it's beautiful in itself. But even when we go out on the road, I mean, we can transform just a plain, not so pleasant looking arena into a beautiful place because we've got a beautiful set, we've got beautiful lights. I mean, we got it all. We got smoke machines, we got the whole thing. We got it. We got flashing lights, flashing colored lights. And you know what? It's all nice. We have a great magazine. We've got a wonderful website. We've got classy TV program. But you know what? If we don't have God's anointing, then none of that is worth anything. <laughs> and that doesn't mean it's not good to do that. We want to present ourselves in a way that's going to cause the world to take a look. And so I don't think we want to just depend on, well, I'm anointed, so it doesn't matter what everything else looks like. No, I don't agree with that. But what I am saying is we can't depend on that. You know how I started my first TV show that was recorded, you would laugh your head off if you could see it now. You know what our backdrop was? It was a blue shower curtain. <laughs> we had one camera, and now I have no idea how many cameras are in here. I mean, we got them on rods and poles and swinging and hanging and everywhere else. We had one camera, and we were in a room that had a very low ceiling, and some of the ceiling tiles were falling down. And we had this wire pole and had this blue curtain hung on the back of it. And it was a two-piece curtain and it kept dividing in the middle. And so we had to paper clip that together or something to hold it. And I still remember what I was teaching on. And when we went on television, that was one of our first programs. And you know what? We got 125 phone calls that day, and I thought I had died and gone to heaven. I wasn't worried about the lights or the backdrop or anything else. I just knew God had anointed it, and He had called me, and we were going to help people all over the world by TV. 
So now look at me because I want to help you. No matter what you don't have, No matter what you don't have, if you do have God, you've got more than enough. That's so, and God wants you to believe that. And when you really believe it, then you'll step out into things and not be always petrified that you're going to make a mistake. Let me tell you something. You might as well just go to get over this stuff. Busy. <laughs> yeah, God is Joyce again. You know, I tried that thing that you told me about, and I just, things just didn't work out good. I mean, I, I stepped out and tried to do something. Man, it wasn't the right, oh. Oh, happens to everybody, huh? <laughs> oh, everybody but you, of course. Yeah, I know you don't make mistakes. <laughs> so... Uh, oh, okay. So I did have part of it right, huh? I just kind of got my head in the way and got, oh, okay. Oh, so you want me to try that again, but this time keep my head out of it. Oh. Uh, oh, you got to go now. I know you, you know, okay, bye. Come on, anybody know what I'm talking about? Lean not to your own understanding. <laughs> Proverbs 3, 5 through 7, I love it. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and mind and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. But the first line of verse 7 is my favorite. Be not wise in your own eyes. You know what? If we already think that we know everything, then we're going to ask God for anything. Let's don't have fat heads and lean souls. God wants you to have a fat soul. And I've got scripture after scripture after scripture that talks about how wonderful it is to have a fat soul. Come on, stick with me here a few minutes. Psalm 106, 9. He rebuked the Red Sea also, and he dried it up. So he led them through the depths as through a pasture land. He saved them from the hand of them that hated them, and he redeemed them from the hand of the Egyptian enemy. And the waters covered their adversaries, and not one of them was left. What a great victory. Then Israel believed his words, trusting and relying on them, and they sang his praise. But they hastily forgot his works. How often do we do that? <laughs> and they did not remember and wait for his plans to develop regarding them. When we don't wait for God's plans to develop regarding us, we get into what I was talking about last night, doing works of the flesh rather than working the works of God. We don't wait to see what God says and then do what he says. We're doing our own thing, expecting God to bless it and make it work. But they lusted exceedingly in the wilderness and tempted and tried to restrain God with their insistent desires in the desert. I love this. And he gave them their request, but he sent leanness into their souls. They didn't have fat souls. They had lean souls. You know why? Because they thought that they wanted something. And they kept it up and kept it up and kept it up until God finally gave it to them. And after they had it, they realized this is not what I wanted at all. Is there anybody here who has ever just pushed and and finagled and maneuvered and manipulated until you got what you wanted a fleshly way. It wasn't that God gave it. You got what you wanted. And after you got it, you thought, boy, I wish I would have listened to God. <laughs> so what did you end up with? Not trying to be rude, but you had a fat head and a lean soul. You thought you knew what was right, didn't listen to God. And when I say you, I've done the same thing. We think that we're hearing from God. Why? Because we want it. 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 But you know what Psalm 17, 15 says? Let's put it up and look at it. It's so beautiful. I love this scripture. Psalm chapter 17, verse 15. And as for me, I will continue beholding your face in righteousness. 
rightness, justice, and right standing with you. I shall be fully satisfied when I awake to find myself beholding your form and having sweet communion with you. You know what happens when you have a fat soul? You're fully satisfied. You're content. And it's because of what you've got inside. It's not because of what you do or don't have in the natural. It's because you've got what you need inside. You've got a fat soul. Actually, there's, I'm going to read you just a couple of scriptures. Psalm 63, 5. My whole being shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise you with joyful lips. You know, when a person has a fat soul, you can hear it come out of their mouth because they don't murmur and complain all the time. Well, I don't like it, and I don't like that, and I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't. You know, I went through periods of time in my life where I don't care what was going on, I was not satisfied. Long periods of time. Long periods of time. Back when Dave and I were first married, I worked a job, and so then I wasn't happy, and I thought, well, if I just didn't have to work, and so then I quit work, and then I thought, well, I'm bored, so I went to work part-time, and then that didn't work. And you know what the bottom line was? Nothing was going to satisfy me because I didn't have a fat soul. You're still trying to get a hold of the fat thing, aren't you? <laughs> Why do you spend your money, Isaiah 55, 2? Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread and your earnings for what does not satisfy? Hearken diligently to me and at what is good and let your soul delight itself in fatness, the profuseness of spiritual joy. Let me give you an example. I might say to you, okay, I've got this set of teachings out there that's got a CDs and DVDs and a book and a workbook and, you know, $45, whatever. Well, some of you immediately would think, well, I, I, can't, I, I can't spend $45 for that. And yet you'll go to lunch and get a greasy hamburger with cheese all over it and a chocolate milkshake and chunk that down, and then you'll go out and get another pair of earrings or another screwdriver or whatever it is that you really don't need. You know, we, we, don't, we spend our money, but we don't want to spend it sometimes on the stuff that's really going to make a big difference in our lives. Yay! think I'll click my heels together. I mean, isn't it true? Our time, what do we do with our time? Sometimes we just waste our time. And if we would just put it into something that bears a little more fruit. Do things for yourself, take care of yourself, celebrate your life, but also make sure that you do things for other people. Because you know what happens? When you make other people happy, you get a fat soul. You really do. There's something that happens on the inside of you when you bless other people that just gives you a fat soul. And even though it blesses them, to be honest, it does something spiritual for you that you don't even really fully and completely understand. Selfish people have lean souls. And Isaiah 10, 27, oh, you're going to love this. Put this up. This is about the anointing, how the anointing destroys the yoke. But you know what the Amplified calls the anointing? Fatness. <laughs> and it shall be in that day that the burden of the Assyrians shall depart from your shoulders and his yoke from off your neck. The yoke shall be destroyed because of, this says fatness. Some other translations say because of the anointing. So we tell people all the time, even as you sit here tonight in this anointed atmosphere, yokes of bondage are broken off of you. Well, this says yokes are destroyed because of fatness fatness of soul. So you know what I want to say? We should have such fat souls that the devil does not have a bondage that will fit around it. He doesn't even have one that he can put around us because our souls are too fat. And we, you know what? If you've got all kinds of chains in your life, you just keep letting your soul get fatter and fatter and fatter with the Word of God and the presence of God and doing the things that God wants you to do. And you're not going to have to wrestle with those bondages. Pretty soon, they're just going to go boop, 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 boop. They'll all just be gone because the devil just cannot hold you. You know, your mind will often lead you away from the things of God. So we need to ask Him to help us be led by the Spirit instead of being led by every thought that falls into our own head. We need to focus on filling up our soul as opposed to just being led by every thought 
that we think. Let's learn how to think with the mind of Christ. And one of the ways to do that is to really study the Word of God. Hey everybody, we are here in Tanzania, and we're in the middle of Tanzania in a land where the Datoga people live. And my first visit here was over a year ago, and the conditions of what we saw here just absolutely broke Shelly and Mai's heart. There was no water, people would have to walk for hours and hours one way to get dirty water. There was no education, and so we started planning and, and asking how can we make a difference in this, and so today, we're here and we have just dedicated one of five wells that we've dug in this area. And these are not just wells, they're solar paneled with pumps and they have reservoirs of 10,000 liters and they will just change this whole community. And we've dedicated a primary school that will, will do grades one, two, three, four, five. So we've literally changed this entire community uh, here in Tanzania and we just couldn't do it without you. So we're so grateful, the people are so appreciative and we say thank you and God bless you. Wilt u meehelpen de wereld te veranderen? Word dan onze partner en doneer regelmatig. Wij sturen u graag kostenloos onze brochure toe. Vraag deze aan door te bellen naar 026 20 22 100 of ga naar joyce-meyer.nl slash partner. En nu, let op. Geloof, liefde, hoop. Stop letting the disappointments of your past dictate your future. Get your hopes up and see what God can do. Durf te hopen. Dit boek zal je inspireren en enthousiast maken. Je mag iets goeds verwachten, omdat God goed is. Bestel nu het boek via internet bij joy-meyer.nl of bel 026 2022 100. Een dag begint pas goed met een goed ontbijt. En een dagelijkse overdenking van Joyce. Nieuwe impulsen en bemoedigende gedachten die je zullen sterken tijdens je dag. Abonneer je gratis op de overdenkingen op joy-meyer.nl slash overdenking of op Facebook. Begin je dag goed. Het is het waard.